The median sale price for a home in Brantford just dropped $70,000 in a single month. That's almost 11% from October to November alone. This basically erases all of the gains that have been felt over the past 12 months. In this video, I'm gonna dig into exactly what's going on in the local real estate market beyond just these headlines to show you exactly what's happening and what it means for you. We're gonna be looking into the deep nuanced data, breaking it down by different price points to show you exactly what's going on. Now, this data is gonna be extremely valuable if you are thinking about making a real estate transaction in the next few months, or even potentially thinking about doing it in 2024. And you'll also find this information very useful if you're just going to holiday parties and people are talking about the real estate market, you're gonna know exactly what's going on instead of just what's being reported in the news. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. And if it's your first time here, welcome. Uh, thanks for stopping by. I look to bring you really valuable information on the Brantford real estate market. My name's Jeff Thibodeau. I'm a real estate broker here in Brantford, Ontario with over 15 years experience helping people just like you navigate their purchase and sale decisions. My goal is to dig into the data and give you the information you need to make a smart move. Something you may not know about me, but I'm sure will become evident by the end of this video is that I am a data and stats geek. And this comes from my background. Actually, my first career out of college was in the market research industry where I spent over a decade analyzing huge data sets to try to figure out what do all these numbers in these Excel charts mean. And I've brought that skill with me into my real estate career where over the past 15 years, I've been digging into the data myself to help understand it for me and to translate that into my clients, dreams, goals, and wishes. So hope you enjoyed this video. Hey, do me a favor before we get started and hit that like button. It only takes a second. It's right there below the video. And what it does is it helps this video come up in the algorithms and share it with more people. And it also encourages me to keep making more content just like this for you. Also, while you're here, if you haven't done it already, hit that subscribe button. That way, as I make more and more videos, they come up on your home feed. I'm releasing new content every single week, including updates on the market, specific tips and tactics for buyers and sellers, information about Bradford, and also tours of incredible homes. So. Thanks for being here. Let's get into the video. In the month of November, there was a dramatic slowdown in the median sale price of homes. That price dropped down to 580 from a, from 650 last month. That's almost 11% in a single month, and that can be pretty concerning. This sudden slide in the number brings us all the way back almost to the low point of our market, which you can see there on the chart. It was October 2022, where the median sale price came in at 560 after that aggressive two-year run-up during the COVID market. Numbers like this can be pretty intimidating if you're thinking about moving, maybe you've got a mortgage on your home, you're wondering what does this mean to the value of my home. First thing to remember is the median sale price is simply that. It's the median or the middle price of the homes that sold that month. Only a small number of homes are changing hands every month, so it doesn't mean the entire housing market in Bradford just went down 11%. It just means some weird things were going on in November and the point of this video is to break that down and predict whether we can expect those trends to continue or it was just a one month anomaly. Now, the first thing I like to do is zoom out a little bit and see, is this just going on in Brantford or is it happening everywhere? And as I throw this chart up here for you, you can see I've got the cities of Cambridge, Hamilton and Kitchener added to the chart. And you notice the trend is very similar across all our markets. The whole kind of Southern Ontario real estate marketplace, especially when we talk about the Greater Golden Horseshoe, which is all the cities looping around Lake Ontario, and Brantford really is part of that overall real estate market. It's all moving and flowing as one big real estate market. So you can see this trend across these markets where we had that run up and a spike during the COVID markets. 2022 was basically a downslide year. And then the story of 2023 was that the market actually came out uh, pretty hot in the beginning of the year and we had a busy spring market. And then there was a couple more interest rate increases in the summer, which pumped the brakes on everything. And we've seen from the summer into now December, things have slowed down a little bit. If I flip over to a map view, you can see how Bradford compares to our neighboring communities. And again, because the prices are being pulled down in all of these towns simultaneously, Brantford still remains one of the most affordable communities on the west side of the GTA in proximity to that city. Um, so for people looking to get a little more home, 
you know, a little more square footage, a bigger lot, we tend to see people choosing Brantford from these areas that are closer to the GTA. And you can also see that if you do continue to move out a little further to towns like Woodstock or even down to St. Catharines, you can find some more value for your dollar if you're willing to be further away from Toronto. Now, this slowdown in real estate prices was to be expected, and I actually posted a short form video a couple weeks ago predicting that. Don't be surprised if you see the average sale price of a home drop for the next couple months. And the reason is right now we've got some people on the market that have been trying to sell their home all year. And as they're facing down the winter months, they're discounting their properties. And with a limited pool of buyers, of course, the buyers are going to be picking off the very best deals. So as the market slows down for a couple months, we tend to see that the most value price properties move really quick. And that's going to pull the average sale price down for a couple months. How was I able to see this in the data? Well, I'm tracking the data real time and already two weeks into November, I could see that pull down of the median sale price. Also, I've been doing this for 15 years. So I know that every year, uh, right around this time, what we have is a large group of sellers who have been trying to get their homes sold, but can't. And especially this year with our highest inventory levels in the recent five years of our market, that means that there's a lot of choice for buyers. So obviously the most value price properties are gonna be the ones to sell. When you combine all that together, you get a quick downward pull on the median sale price. So we kind of saw this coming a mile away, although for many people, it'll come as quite a shock. So there's three basic things that are affecting the real estate market right now. Let's take a look at them. First of all, the higher priced buyers have pretty much pumped the brakes. And it looks like that across a lot of markets. During the run-up, it was very normal to see homes selling for over a million dollars here in Brantford and homes that weren't even that special. They just had inflated prices. Uh, and now it seems like those higher priced buyers have moved over to the sidelines for, for a while. Uh, basically everything over 700 was pretty quiet in November. The second thing, like we just mentioned, is those sellers that really do have a motivation to sell, they're getting pretty nervous staring down the Christmas holiday break and the winter season. So they're aggressively adjusting the price of their homes and negotiating with buyers to get a deal done. And third, the combination of high interest rates, extended inflation, increasing mortgage payments, all these things combined have really put a pinch on the Canadian consumer. And so when you've got all that combined and we're looking into the winter home selling season, I believe there's a lot of buyers that have decided, hey, maybe now is not the right time. I'm going to wait and see what 2024 looks like. So these three things combined have really caused the real estate market to lose its energy going into the winter. But I will say this is a very normal thing to happen. Just the conditions of this year are a little abnormal. This chart I'm showing you here, every red dot represents a home that was sold in November. And that bolded white line is 100% or full asking price. So if the dots are above that line, they sold for over their asking price and the dots below that line were under their asking price. And we've got prices ranging from low uh, at the $200,000 level all the way up to the million dollar level across the uh, left to right axis here. And what you can see is the majority of properties sold for just slightly under the asking price, anywhere from 95% to 99% of the asking price. Got some interesting things here. I don't know if you can notice there's this weird diagonal line of red dots right in the center of the chart. And that's actually a little anomaly where there was a whole group of homes that were priced at 699 and they all sold, but they all sold for different prices. So you see this like pretty straight diagonal line. I just love seeing little things like that in the data. There's a smaller one just over to the side um, beside it, but you can see that there were very few dots above uh, the 100% line. And these were typically properties where the strategy from the listing agent and the seller was to intentionally severely underprice the home to try to drive up a bit more and it worked, right? It doesn't mean that these homes sold for more than they were worth. It means that they were probably priced far less than they were worth and they were bid back up to the proper price. But the general strategy, the majority of homes that are selling right now are actually negotiating down below their asking price. If we look at the overall demand in the real estate market, last month there were 81 transactions and that's down significantly by 32% from October. Now, interestingly, October was a little boom. It was up from September. Um, so I think we saw a little rush of deals get done in October that maybe pulled a few out of what would potentially be happening in November. And it's weird to see that little spike there, uh, the second right uh, bar on the chart. 
Um, so we could have a little bit of a statistical anomaly there, but either way, the market is naturally slowing down like it does every winter. Um, and so these numbers are very normal. If we look at the year to date numbers so far this year, 1,361 sales have happened. That is a 5.6% decrease from last year, significant 32% de decrease from 2021, but that's when interest rates were still at um, almost zero levels and the hype was all still running in the market. Um, so a 5.6% dec decrease from last year, but we wanna take a look on our next slides on how that relates to the number of homes coming on the market. On the supply side, there were 159 homes put on the market last month, and that also is down significantly by 35% from the month before. So a big slowdown in the number of people choosing to put their homes up for sale in November. Year to date also, that number is down 5%, right in line with the demand numbers. So what we're seeing is we've got about 5% fewer transactions happening this year, but equally fewer buyers and sellers compared to last year. An interesting thing that I like to track because there's this behavior in the market that is kind of new over the last few years where if a person's selling their home and they're not getting the result they want, instead of just making a plain price correction, what they're doing is they're pulling their home off the market and then relisting it to make it look like a fresh listing. Well, in the background, we can see this activity, you know, on, on public sites like realtor.ca and otherwise you might see and it might look like it's a brand new listing with zero days on market but it really isn't and so this behavior has been going on and i've been tracking it month over month because it actually over represents the number of new listings on the market back in november we actually had 35 percent of all the new listings were not new at all they had been on the market before and they had just been canceled and relisted as a new property again if we look at the number of actual new listings being 65 percent we translate that into the real numbers that brings us down to 103 actual new listings versus the 81 homes that actually sold and those two numbers are a lot closer together than the fictitious level of new listings so we the market is actually turning over quite well when we compare real new listings versus sales the total number of homes for sale in november came in at 312 down a little bit over the last two months from its peak back in September at 345. Now the inventory levels are up to their highest points since about 2014, because inventory levels have been severely depressed for the last few years. You can see on this chart, the previous high and low points, usually coming in the summer or fall. Uh, if we look back to 2021, you can see that the peak was 157 homes for sale, falling to its absolute low point of only 26 homes for sale over the holiday season, and then rising again to 299 last year as the market slowed down, coming back to 178 last winter, rising to 345 this year. Now we do expect this number to decrease, especially next month, uh, because what happens is many people who have their home up for sale have an expiration date in December, and they choose to let that date come and the home come off the market. And they'll usually stay off the market for a month or two and wait for spring to try again. So we do expect the inventory number to pull down significantly and for there to be many fewer homes for sale as we head into the new year. My favorite single indicator of the market and one that you should track for yourself is called the month's supply of inventory. This is a single indicator that can tell us whether we have a buyer's market or a seller's market. And the way it's calculated is by taking the total number of homes for sale, the inventory, and dividing that by the number of homes that just sold in the previous month. And that single number gives us a really good indicator on how the market feels for buyers and sellers. So for example, if the month supply is one, that means there's equal number of homes available for sale as are selling. So that means they're turning over very quickly. The inventory is turning over in a one month time. But if we take an extreme other example, like a month supply of six, that means there's actually six times as many homes, like 600 for sale and only hundred selling. So if you're a buyer, you have all this choice to look at and if you're a seller, you're looking up and down your street and you're seeing other for sale signs. And so it's really important to watch this number. It's been climbing for two years. We spent some time there, you can see on the left side of the chart, under the level of one. So the market was moving extremely fast paced. There was almost nothing for sale compared to how quickly everything was selling. And that number has been steadily climbing over the last two seasons. And it did turn the corner. It peaked in September and it's been coming down. A little counterintuitive to think, okay, why are prices coming down? 
and the market's like coming back down the month's supply. Well, that's because the inventory is slowing down. The number of homes for sale is coming down faster than the demand is coming down. So all these things are slowing down into the winter, but the actual amount of choice out there in the market is slowing down. And again, that comes back to those homes just coming off the market because they didn't sell, not because they got a successful offer. Now, I want to take a little bit deeper look. This is what I promised you at the beginning of the video. And this one chart uh, really explains a lot of what happened in the data in November. On this chart, I've broken down the sale points of homes in $100,000 increments. And what I have in the colors is the last three months of sales, the number of homes that sold in each of those um, $100,000 increments. And the big shift you can see here is that in the $700 to $799,000 price bracket, in October, there was a huge spike. It was like all the $700,000 homes got cleared out. Well, not all of them, but a lot of them. And then into November, that number fell right off a cliff. You can see how small that pink bar is compared to the blue bar. I've got the arrows pointing at them in the chart here. Now, again, this could be a slight statistical anomaly that just more of these homes and transactions happened near the end of the month of October instead of the beginning of the month of November. But this would account for a large portion of the decline in the median sale price. You can imagine if a whole bunch of the higher end price point just stopped selling in one month, that's going to severely affect that median number. The other thing we can notice on this chart is when we go past $700,000 and we look at the $800,000, $900,000, and then a million and above, you can just see how small these bars are. That portion of the market has really slowed down. But at the same time, the number of people trying to sell these homes has not slowed down. So there's a flood of people trying to get their higher priced homes sold. And so we see lots of choice on the market, but the buyers really aren't there. In the last uh, month, for example, there were only two sales over 900. There was one at 950 and one at 2.5 million. Both of those homes have been on the market for like six months. And other than that, everybody else has just waited for a month and not been able to get their home sold. Now, the majority of those higher priced listings are piling up in two specific neighborhoods. One is the newer area of West Brant. And the reason is there's a lot of larger, newer homes here and people potentially paid a high price to get into those homes. And now they're looking to sell them, but there just really isn't a lot of demand. So you can see a ton of supply available. If you've got $900,000, a million dollars in your shopping in West Brant, you can go look at like a dozen or more houses and take your pick. The other neighborhood is a little bit newer to Brantford. It's actually tucked in right by the river off of Hardy Road. It was in an infill neighborhood. So what's happening there is a lot of brand new owners, the first owners of these homes are already trying to put them up for sale, but there really is no market right now for them. So we see a high influx of homes in that neighborhood. Now this chart here shows a lot of data in one chart. Again, I've got it broken down by the $100,000 price ranges. And in the lighter bar, I'm showing you the number of homes currently for sale. And then in the bright blue are the number of homes that just sold. So this is effectively the two data points that make up the month's supply. And I've actually calculated that for you and put it there in the pink number right above the bar. And what you can see is in these lower price points, the month's supply is coming in at 1.4, uh, 3.9, a little bit of an anomaly there at the 4 to 4.99. Uh, but then we see again 1.8, 2.4. Those are all very low numbers and indicate an aggressive, fast-paced seller's market. Now, as soon as we move up, you see, into the $700,000 price range, that number spikes to 7.4, then it moves up to 8.3, then it moves up to 18, and it's pretty much incalculable over a million because there's really only one sale and 34, 35 homes for sale. So the market is acting very differently right in that seven dollars to $800,000 price point Above and below that, you can expect things to feel completely different in the Brantford real estate market. Okay, my last chart before we talk about predictions for what's next and what you should do if you're thinking about doing a real estate transaction in the next year. This chart shows a lot of data at once and it's one of my favorite to kind of visualize the overall market. Every blue dot on here represents a home that is currently for sale and every red dot represents a home that has sold in the last 30 days. And we have the prices ranging across the bottom axis and the time the home's been on the market uh, ranging on the y-axis up and down. 
And you can see that the majority of the action, the cluster of red dots is all happening here, kind of 350 to 750 and under 30 days on market. That's like the sweet spot where the action's hot, the new listings are coming up and selling, uh, the buyers and sellers are still kind of acting like it's the hot market because there isn't a whole lot of choice and there is still quite a bit of demand. But then as we go out of that bubble, you just see more and more blue. Uh, we've got this ring, I'm kind of calling it no man's land, where the houses are rising up, you know, into their second and third month on the market, or they're over there above that 750 mark. And you can see this kind of like thick blue ring around the red pocket. And then the other thing you can notice is like the top half of this chart is homes that have been on the market for six months or more. You only see those kind of two red dots up there. Otherwise, it's just no man's land. There's homes that are just kind of sitting perpetually and not getting any action. And so the big takeaway of this chart when I sit down with my clients to give them advice is that we want to be down in that cluster of red dots. And so it's very important when it comes to listing your home to get all your strategy right the first time and you want to get the price, the marketing, the preparation, everything all done perfectly the first time so you get it done. Because as you leave that cluster of red dots, you, you head up into a lot more competition and a lot slower feel of your market. The chances of getting your home sold and sold for the best price reduce the longer it's on the market. Now, the opposite's true for buyers. Uh, for buyers, you've got this two different feels of the market too. If you're downplaying in the fresh new listings under $750,000, you're going to need to act very quickly and still be out there looking at that home the same day it comes on market or at least within a couple of days and be ready to make a decision to make an offer. But if you head up into the, the area where all the blue dots are, you're actually going to have a lot of choice. Now, some of that stuff might be overpriced, but I encourage you, you know, try your offer. Uh, those people do still want to sell their home. They have it up on the market and they're probably not getting a lot of other action right now. So they'll be happy to see something come in on paper and you never know where you might be able to get a great deal. So with all this going on in our real estate market, we've got our typical seasonal pattern combined with our kind of medium term cycle of the market cooling off from those COVID years. And then we've got our bigger, you know, factors we didn't really get into in this video, but we still have this imbalance of supply and demand. Brantford's a growing city with not really enough new home construction happening to fuel the number of people moving into the city. So what does all this mean for the next year? Well, in the short term, I think you can expect that December, January, and most of February will feel quite quiet and slow. You know, that is a normal winter real estate market. And other than the couple of very fast paced COVID years where the market came right out of the gate in January, right after New Year's, Normally, January is about as sleepy as December, and February really does depend on the weather. If it's a milder year, buyers kind of wake up a little earlier, but if it's one of those deep freeze, crummy Februaries, then you're going to be in uh, for a slower start to the real estate market. Now, I will say traditionally, the buyers show back up before the sellers. This happens every year. Um, so I always give a recommendation to seller clients, if you're looking at a spring listing, you might want to consider backing it up a little bit or at least being ready um, because when the buyers return to the market, uh, they don't have a lot of choice in the early part of the year. So it tends to be a little fast paced market to start and then the rest of the sellers come in the market and kind of slow things down. So if you can get out ahead of that, it's usually a smart move to, uh, to get you good action on your listing. All this is part of making a big plan for the new year. Um, also, what we expect over the new year is that you know, the Bank of Canada just announced earlier this week another rate hold. Most economists are predicting no more rate increases and everyone's betting that rates are coming down in 2024. The bond yields have also kind of peaked and they've been coming down for the better part of a month and the bond yields are really what affects the five-year fixed rates. So it's a pretty safe bet that the cost of borrowing will be lower in 2024 than it has been for the past two years. And that means people will have increased purchase power and increased confidence to get back out in the housing market. Um, so as a buyer, you might want to try to get out ahead of that. And as a seller, you maybe want to wait for that to happen uh, to try to increase the sale price of your home. It's all a little bit of a waiting game, but I promise you I'll be bringing you the information right here on this channel first as I see it happening. If you're considering buying a home, now might be the time. If a home you like is available, I would encourage you to go out and see it and potentially try an offer. 
a lot of sellers would welcome to get the job done, even if that means a little bit less price for them. But if they take their home off the market and say, forget about it for the winter, well, it's no longer up for sale and you're not going to be able to see it. So there's a little window here before the end of the year to potentially grab a deal, negotiate a longer closing if you don't want to move in the winter. If you are a buyer with over $800,000, well, Brantford is your oyster right now. You have an amazing amount of choice and your money is going further than it has in the last few years. So as a specific strategy, especially if you're upgrading your home or you're moving in from another city where you cashed out some equity, you can be a very powerful position to buy a home right now if you've got that kind of money to spend. For sellers, it's a little bit rockier to make a decision right now. By the time you're watching this video, we're probably into mid-December. Um, so it's probably too late to try to rush your home onto the market before Christmas. I wouldn't recommend listing your home the week or two before Christmas, but it might be worth looking at listing it early in January. As that inventory falls and the buyers that are out there are basically looking at just old stale inventory, I do believe that the new fresh listings will be getting a lot of attention in January but we have to have a plan depending on the price point to bring your home to market effectively. Now, if you're a seller who's hoping to sell for over eight, over nine, potentially over a million, the landscape looks a lot scarier for you. There is a ton of choice available out there. And until borrowing costs come back down and bring a little more liquidity into the market, it's probably gonna be a very competitive market for you. So you have a couple choices. Either you wait it out um, or you take a long look at the house you have and the competition that's available and you make a really good strategy to price it properly, bring it to market properly and very aggressively market it so that the buyers, the limited number of buyers that are out there, they are considering and choosing your home. Thank you for sticking with me this long. I want to tell you about the biggest opportunity I'm seeing in the real estate market right now. Think about this, right? If you're doing two transactions, so you already own a home and you're thinking about buying another home, Ideally, you would want to buy the home in a buyer's market and sell your home in a seller's market and maximize both sides of the transaction. And this isn't always possible because you're kind of moving at the same time in the same city or whatever, and the whole market's moving together. But right now there's a huge opportunity, like I showed you on the chart before, where the more middle range price point is still a seller's market and the higher range price point is squarely a buyer's market. So for sellers who are considering a move up, to a higher priced home right now, there's a huge window of opportunity. If you have a home that's between like seven hundred and five hundred thousand dollars, and you have the financial means to move up to your bigger home or your forever home or that home that maybe you thought you'd get in a couple years, I would encourage you to look at what's available there because for a couple hundred thousand dollar bump, like going from you know six fifty to say eight fifty or nine fifty, um, you're going to see a tremendous jump in the amount of home you're able to get. So you could be able to sell your home at a premium price, fair market value right now, and then go and have amazing negotiating power on that larger, more substantial home. So this window is not always open. And I think that it, their opportunity is going to be there until we see the Bank of Canada lower the rates and we see the buyers kind of return to the market and you will see you know, the energy come back into that higher price point. But until then, the move up market could be a huge winning opportunity for you. All right, thanks for sticking with me for this whole video. I know it was a long one, but I wanted to break down what was going on in the market. If you have any questions, that's what I'm here for. I love breaking down individual requests. What does this mean for me? Um, I want to know what my home's worth. All that, I would love to talk to you. You can either leave me a comment right below this video, or if you want to reach out to me privately, all my contact information is below. And of course, if you want to sit down and make a plan for your next move, whether that's selling your current house, buying your first house, or you want to take advantage of that move up strategy I just talked about, that's what I'm here for. Um, just give me a quick call or there's even a link right in the description that you can book yourself right into my calendar and then we just start talking. It all starts with one conversation about your situation and from there we start to make a plan. There's no cost or obligation to any of that and I'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to hit that like button and remember to subscribe to the channel to get these videos right on your homepage and make sure to check out this video next.